Uh, hello, YouTube. <laughs> Welcome back to the Every Closet. My name is Stephanie, and along with my partner Ethan, we are two full time resellers on apps like Poshmark and eBay. Today, we are continuing full steam ahead with the Bolo Alphabet. Um, I don't know if this is video two, maybe it's video three, maybe it's video four. I don't know. Not my best intro. <laughs> So that's what we're doing. Um, we don't need any more preamble, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out this video in the corner up here where there's the introduction to the bolo alphabet. Let's get started with the bolos, cause, cause we want to. Next is a JLA. It is a Brooklyn-based women's wear label creating handmade garments that are inspired by movement, comfort, and the art of loving oneself. <laughs> Um, their name and philosophy come from a JLA, which is a Sanskrit mantra for standing in your power and translates to invincible, indestructible. I just thought that was really cool. Um, it was from 2015. They claim to be 99% sustainable, whatever that means. And they emphasize the use of natural fibers and things like that. Here's the label. So comps are, and take a shot every time I say this, widely varied. A lot of comps around the $30 to $60 mark, and there are at least a quarter of the comps that reach over the $100 mark. The retail is between $200 to $300, so that's pretty good retention of value. But this brand is quite young, and we will just have to watch it for if it skyrockets in popularity or peters out down the road. It is also not currently carried at very many retailers, so that may be impacting its reach. I think it's mostly you have to buy it from their website. Age. I'm saying that so wrong. Age. Age. Age is another top tier bolo brand. A home run if you find a piece. Founded in 2008 by best friends Adrian Norris and Edwina Forrest. <laughs> they ran. It's a contemporary Australian fashion brand dedicated to raw beauty through femininity and effortless cool. They make all sorts of clothing. They're known best for their dresses and for puffy sleeved blazers, but they make shoes and kids clothes and they have an active line as well. The comps are, as of this recording, stellar. Very, very few comps below $100, most $150 to $350 and that's a resale. I couldn't actually find any resale comps on their athletic lines, so maybe hold off on picking those up. But if I'm being honest, I'm certain I'd grab it either way. It's um, a great brand to pick up. A Kemian Kin, glorious, our first anthropology sub brand. I will try to make this as brief as I am physically able to. Now, many brands are carried at anthropology, and many brands are anthropology, meaning exclusively carried there and made by the company. This is a whole complex, very in-depth thing and we can't go into it all in this series. If you'd like an anthropology series, well, for one, check out my Instagram where I did do a series of posts and seven tiers of anthro brands and also went over how to tell if something is in fact anthropology for sure. Um, sadly, no, you can't just use the RN number 66170 because that is also the RN number for Urban Outfitters and Free People, and which are all the same company umbrella. Also, tons of pieces carried to Anthro will have a different RN number, and just simply, it isn't that simple. So please don't tag your items as anthropology unless you're certain that they're from there. Okay, so let's a Kimmy and Kid. You can be pretty safe tagging this as anthropology. As far as my knowledge, it has only ever been carried there, made by the company. Um, I think I put this on tier one or two of my anthropology brand tier list, meaning one of the lowest two tiers. This is what the tag looks like. Uh, looking at Anthro's website right now, there aren't currently, meaning 2022, carrying any pieces by this sub brand, but there are pieces as recent as 2018, and then going all the way back to probably around the beginning of anthropology, like early, late 90s. Um, suffice it to say, most of and Kin pieces that you're going to find are not very recent. So that negatively impacts their value. In fact, if you Google image search for Kemi and Kin online on Google, nearly every single result is a secondhand source for the brand. So that tells us that it is very ubiquitous on the secondhand market. Uh, lots of competition, and it's not hard to find. Therefore, its resale value has been driven significantly down. 
most older anthropology pieces retailed between 50 and 150, especially in this brand, it didn't have much higher than that. And the average comps in this brand are 15 to $25 with a giant amount of variety. I will say, as this is our first anthro brand, Canadian resellers, anthropology pieces do better in Canadian markets than they do in US. I believe simply do there's more anthropology stores in the US and they're less common in Canada. And frankly, it's a smaller reseller market. So it's just less available up north. So I'd always recommend picking this up if you find it at the bins, but I can't in good conscience sit here and recommend that you guys pay more than maybe $4 for a piece. I have done it, but don't follow my example, follow my advice. And I'm telling you, do not pay up for it. It is a lower tier bolo brand and one that you will likely come across quite often. Acris Punto. This is a long-standing, well, well-established luxury brand. Fun facts, it was founded in 1922 by Alice Kringler Scooch, which makes the initials Acris, using her name. Um, it's originally from Switzerland, taken over by her son and is now run by his son. I digress. Uh, he's the current creative director today and credited with the brand's current like worldwide success. The retail of this brand is nearly always over a thousand dollars, up to even like five or seven thousand dollars. Nothing to sneeze at. The resale, as you can imagine, for a luxury brand all over the place. Generally, they're honestly underwhelming compared to the very high retail. Many people end up letting pieces go for as low as twenty to fifty dollars. I wouldn't, but there are those comps. Um, it certainly isn't like a home run for sure if you find it, and pieces tend to sit. New it tags items, as usual, sell for more. Um, the highest comp I see is around $800, which was likely a like $4,000 trench coat. So don't um, pay up a ton expecting that these are going to be worth their retail price. They just simply mostly aren't. But obviously, if you thrift it, if you find it at the bins, giant bolo, pick it up. You need to know about it, but you also need to know not like you shouldn't be paying like, oh, I can pay $50 for this because I can sell it for 300. Not necessarily. So yeah, luxury and be careful. One of my favorite brands, Alea. One of my personal favorite brands to resell. It is another luxury brand. It's founded by the fashion designer Adazine Alea, who was born in Tunisia. And the brand is based in Paris. Um, he was friends with Thierry Mugler and other major fashion names, in case you were curious. The brand was peak successful in the 1980s, becoming incredibly well known for its clinging silhouette dresses, which were worn by like Madonna, Naomi Campbell, and all the hottest celebrities of that time. Um, here is their present day label. They do have vintage pieces and those can sell about as well as their recent pieces, depending on the piece. They make clothing, shoes, bags, basically everything fashion. And retail is north of $1,000 most of the time. The comps are strong. We're talking like two to $800 strong. I would pay up for an authentic pair of Alea shoes all day, every day. I assume the lower comps, honestly, are a combo of either flawed or questionable authenticity. They do particularly well on the resale market uh, with their shoes. But also their bags do even better, although I see a lot fewer comps, so they're also rarer. And there is this like classic Alea corset belt that you should know about, whose comps range between four to $700. So you need to be on the lookout for that if you find it. And Alea is another one of those brands where even their dust bags, even their empty shoe boxes have resale value. So Again, if you can sell an empty shoe box for like 20 bucks, that means do not pair, sell a pair of their shoes for under a hundred because yeah, we sold a pair for a lot of money and it's just one of my favorite brands to find and just the, just the toppiest tier of bolo. Next brand is Alala. It's an activewear brand. Uh, let's pull up that logo. You shouldn't have any trouble not using it for Alea because even though those words sound the same, it's an activewear brand and the logo is very different. It was sold, it is sold at Revolve, Shopbop, etc. It's named after the Greek goddess whose name is a battle cry. And the co-founder apparently conceptualized the brand while running a marathon. So it is also a 100% woman run brand founded in 2014. It's supposed to be luxury athleisure. These have a high, high retail, over $100 per piece. 
but the resale doesn't hold up to that currently. Most pieces will get you between 20 to 35. If you find newer tags, you can grab closer to retail, but I would advise strongly against paying up for this brand at present. Certainly a solid grab from the bins or definitely from the thrift if you're only paying five-ish dollars. I'm gonna butcher this name again. Okay, Alan Nui. Here's another giant bolo for you, the Alan Nui fringe cardigan sweater. They are bright, they're very popular, they are legit reselling for upwards of $700. There are comps in the range of $1,000, okay? These are some sought after cardigans. They retail for like $4,000 and so they're very freaking valuable. Um, it is a Milan, Italy brace brand. It started in 2016, started by some Italian guy who's apparently very gifted like sweater and knit knitwear maker. Um, and that seems like it went incredibly well for him. So do not ever pass these up. You will be kicking yourself four months. I don't want that for you. So here's the tag and here's what the style looks like and probably get this authenticated, but I'd pay a lot for one of these things. Next is Alberto Ferretti. Does this shock any of us? That is an Italian brand based in Milan and named after their designer. The brand began in 1968. Comps are a literal mess. Let's just appreciate this comp scroll for a moment. What the frick is that? <laughs> I think this designer deserves better. She started and owns AEFFE, which you'll know if you have ever resold an authenticated Moschino before. It's a clothing producer and distributor for Moschino, John Paul Gaultier, and some other brands of that caliber. So obviously a giant name in fashion. Anyway, her newer pieces resell for more than the older ones. Also gowns and of course new with tags items. In particular, look out for this sweater or this sweater or ones like it as these comps are consistently over $50 up to 50. These sweaters are relatively popular on the resale market. Anyway, I just think this brand deserves to have better comps in general and let's move on because I, I like it. Next is Alberto Macali. This is a women's fashion label named for its founder designer that was founded in 1981 and known for maximalist designs with lots of bold colors and prints. It's been worn by a ton of celebrities. This brand retails for around $150 to $400 and the comps are in the low to mid tier range between $30 to $50 usually. Um, a lot lower, some higher. It's a brand I wouldn't ever want to pay up for. I think it's risky, but it's worth knowing about if your cost of goods are low. Just because someone's name sounds fancy doesn't mean that their brand resells for a ton of money. And that is a good <laughs> lesson for us. But yeah, I'd pick it up at the bin. Next is Albion. So the word Albion is an alternative name for Great Britain. As such, there are many things named Albion, like games, and other very irrelevant to us reseller things. What we are talking about is Albion, the clothing lame. The clothing lame, that wasn't nice. We are talking about Albion, the clothing brand, which is actually shockingly a US based brand named after the Albion Basin in Utah. Um, it was founded by a husband and wife. Uh, its brand focuses on activewear, lifestyle clothing, and also mainly swimwear. They're very size inclusive and their retail is quite low for a bolo. Pieces usually sell for around $138, um, between 75 and 150. So here's the label, but the resale is best for the bathing suits in this brand. And as with all bathing suits, new with tags is king, as are one pieces and matching sets over singles. Um, but the resale is around $40 to $50 for full suits, give or take. And that's actually a fairly good value retention, um, especially since a lot of people don't enjoy the concept of secondhand swimwear, which fair enough, I guess. Okay, the next brand is Album Di Famiglia. And let's do a direct quote again here. So it was founded in 2000 by Monica Rosconi, and it is a minimalist, family-run, ready-to-wear label with a committed focus on relaxed shapes, high-quality textiles, and local Italian production. Everyday pieces like crop drawstring trousers, wide-cut t-shirts, and cocoon-like knits are intended for long-term wear and designed to evoke life's simple pleasures. So the entire collection is conceived and sustainably produced in a small Italian workshop. So they do a lot of neutrals and casual basic, basic pieces, 
but for outrageous, or at least in my dumb, uncultured opinion, prices. Here's the label. Uh, the carrot tag is often written in Italian, and the comps are okay. Pieces should sell okay in the $50 to $60 range. There are some over 100 and even one or two at like 300 but there just aren't as many pieces of this brand on the resale market. Um, I would probably pick this up and then hold out for the right buyer. Definitely not the one saying, why is a used plain t-shirt $50? Which I can't personally help with, but agree with them on, despite being unwilling to bend to their lowball offer. ALC, this is a very, very well-respected fashion label. Let me quote directly again. Before founding ALC, Andrea Lieberman worked as a stylist for some of the biggest names in popular culture. She even dressed Jennifer Lopez in that green dress for the 2000 Grammy Awards. Today, she designs everything from impeccably tailored separates to feminine dresses. Anyway, she is a New York-based designer, and she launched ALC in 2009, so it's fairly recent. Let's assume ALC stands for Andrea Lieberman Collection. It is a really common high-end label carried everywhere. Farfetch, Nordstrom, Netta Porter, even the Bay, which if you're Canadian, you know speaks to its ubiquity in the fashion market. Uh, retail is high, hovering around $500, give or take, a few hundred dollars. The label looks like this photo here, and me. Anyway, the resale is extremely varied as per usual. <laughs> Almost so much that I don't know how the heck to advise you all on it though. It should sell between $20 and $400, and legit anywhere in between. Um, likely that'll be based on like the quality of your photos, maybe the fabric content of the piece, and honestly your level of patience, because the retail is there. So you should be able to get, you know, somewhere in the $100 range for these pieces. They retail for a ton, but yeah, it's, it's very common and I've seen pieces go for less. Just don't be one of those people. And that's as simple as I think that is. Okay, the next brand that we are going to go over is Alchemia di Balin. This is a very, very new Bolo brand, 2016 launch, and they only sell women's shoes. Uh, some family, the Balin family, which is hilarious, made the brand. Anyway, the label looks like this. Here's some examples of their kind of funky shoe style. And the retail is around the $500 to $800 mark. With the resale, just not super common yet. Um, I have seen some comps reach over $200, some stuck in that $50 to $100 range. It is a very obscure bolo at the moment, I do admit but we will see how it develops. Okay, next is Aldo Martens. This is another one of our anthropology carried brands, although definitely not exclusive to anthropology. In fact, straight from anthropology's website, you can read it states like, in 1975, designer Marty Brisbell founded Aldo Martens, a luxury brand specializing in women's wear with a chic cosmopolitan edge. Designed and made in Spain, his impeccably tailored garments are distinctly European, featuring bold prints and the finest materials. So I believe I put this on tier six or about of my anthro uh, tier list, which means one of the top two tiers. Here's what the label looks like, and it is a really strong anthro associated brand. Um, the resale ranges between 40 to $65. Some pieces can go over 100, some lower. Um, and I really like the styles, totally something I would wear. Uh, we've had one piece from this brand. I didn't know what it was at the time, but it sold within two weeks in our closet. And I'd definitely be picking it up, even paying up to like 10 to $12 in some cases, which is a lot for an anthro brand. Next is Alambica. Alambica is one of the shiny new bolo brands that I posted about on my Instagram in 2022. So fairly new to me, although you don't even need to actually follow me on Instagram anymore now that all the Bolo content is mainly here on YouTube, but uh, if you do want to, it's just at the Every Closet. <laughs> anyway, Alan Vika was founded in 2005 by two women fashion designers. One was an Israeli designer, good fashion, and then another one was actually a anthropologist. So that's super interesting. Alan Vika, it has like it's supposed to be for women of all ages and all sizes in the middle and large size range. They have a very layered look, which is especially flattering. 
Um, they also have vanity sizing. So the size goes one, two, three, four, and those correspond to like a small, medium, large, extra large, etc. So check their char sizing chart. Most of their pieces are meant to be worn oversized though. Comps range a lot, but the mean is probably around $60 with a range from 25 to 125 pretty consistently. I would be on the lookout for this at the bins or the thrift, just likely not going to pay up for these items, especially not over like $15. Alex Crane, all right. We are at the point of the bolo list where we're about to tell you everyone named Alex who has made a very successful fashion brand. <laughs> or Alexander. There's around 10, and that's just the ones I compiled. I am certain there are many more, so let's start here with Alex Crane. Here's what the label looks like. His name in like a diamond shape. This brand launched, again, really recent, 2016 in New York. It describes as breezy, and it's known for its linen crafted items. His stuff actually only retails for like $80 to $150, which is really impressive because the resale is usually between $35 to $60. Uh, they do sometimes sell women's, but they are chiefly known for their men's line. I think it began as only men's, and now they've added a women's line as well. Um, definitely reasonable bolo at the thrift or at the bins. Don't pay too much, but really great fast flips. Alex Mill is next. Is co-founded by two dudes. One of them was previous designer at J. Crew and Madewell, so there, it has a very similar style vibe there. They call themselves timeless and not trendy. And they began in 2012 out of the mission to make the perfect shirt, they say. <laughs> Here's the tag, and it has a tagline which says wash and go, so look out for that. Retail is between 100 and 250 mainly, and the resale holds up pretty well. They do have men's and women's, and both comps can vary, but I've seen most between the $40 to $70 range with a bit of variation. So don't shell out like $30 for it if you find it at thrift store prices though, and I'd always be grabbing it at the bins. This brand seems very popular. The jumpsuits in particular can go for over $100 resale. Even just a basic men's white button down shirt is usually selling for $35 or more, which is fantastic. Such a basic in my opinion. So yeah, follow this brand. Alex Perry, okay. We have gone over some amazing bolos so far. Truly, we are only in the AL section. So we have so many to go. But I'm going to make a very bold claim and say that this brand is possibly one of the top five bolo brands out there on the market right now. Like right up there with Gucci or the like, or maybe even better, okay? Are you ready? <laughs> Alex Perry, here's the tag. It is an Australian brand. Pay whatever the heck you want for these. I would legitimately pay up to $250 for an authentic Alex Perry dress right now. Um, you know, depending on the factors, like I'd pay more for certain factors like maxi length, celebrity worn, etc. The comps for dresses by this designer range from $200 resale to $2,000, and that is used. Uh, though if you want over a thousand, Nua tags obviously does really help that. <laughs> I would say that you should expect your authentic Alex Perry dress in good condition to go for at least $400. And I honestly wouldn't be accepting below that based on comps. The dresses retail between like $900 and $10,000 and everywhere in between. Mainly I'd say like around the 3000 mark on average. Um, they're very often seen on the red carpet, his dresses. And so check that out as well. If you somehow find one of these, see if someone famous wore it. And yeah, this is just basically the highest tier of bolo I could ever recommend. And um, DM me on Instagram if you find one so that we can just both sit there and celebrate your amazing good fortune because I would love that. Alexander McQueen. All right, if you are a longtime reseller or you're just into fashion, this is not new to, news to you at all, but it was news to me when I started. So of course, we shall be including it. It is a fantastic bolo brand considered luxury designer. Alexander McQueen launched in 1992, and he sadly died in 2010 at the very much too young age of 40. He also used to be the chief designer at Givenchy, so high, high-end fashion dude here. The brand is still going very strong though, and more recent pieces can sell for even higher dollar amounts um, just due to their recency. Retails usually between $500 and $4,000. The comps are super varied as per usual, but in my opinion, I don't think you ever have to let go 
of a used Alexander McQueen piece for under $100, as long as it's in good condition. And lots can go for two to 500 or more. So like, if you ever find it, unless you're at a consignment store that's pricing it, you know, where its resale value is, I'd pick it up 10 times out of 10. Top tier brand. Um, they have lots of skulls, like even a very famous skull scarf from them goes for over $100 resale. So don't undervalue this brand. It makes me very sad when I see that happen. And it's one of my favorites. Next is Alexander Vauthier. Wow, okay, I just learned something about fashion doing research on this dude. So first of all, it's super interconnected. This Alexander was also employed at Theory Mugler, and then he designed for Jean-Paul Gaultier. Gaultier? I can't say that. For a long time. But the cool thing that I learned from this is that the term haute couture is actually a controlled term in fashion. As in you have to be a member of the House of Haute Couture, which is like the governing body for fashion in France. I thought that was really cool. Okay, let's get into the brand. Uh, here's the tag. Obviously, this is a luxury brand. There won't be any vintage of his own name's label because it debuted in 2009. His label is known for the colors black and gold, featuring a lot of Swarovski crystals being woven into fabrics. And for comps, mainly range between 250 to 1,000. So if you find it anywhere, Anywhere at all other than a retail store, you should probably pick it up. <laughs> Another one of those high, high, high tier bolo brands. Gosh, I am going to have to start inventing new words for these brands. We're on a crazy hot streak here. Alexander is just a good name if you want to be <laughs> a fashion designer. In that vein, next is Alexander Wang, another absolutely iconic fashion designer. He is an American. He began his own label in 2005. He was also the creative director at Balenciaga for a while. So hi, hi, and again. The Alexes did not come to play, okay. <laughs> so his label is known for being very edgy, lots of use of the color black, retails usually over $500 into like thousands. And this is another brand that I don't wanna see any of you accepting under $100 for on the resale market because you do not have to. Yes, many comps are below $100, but screw those comps, that's dumb, and don't be one of those people, okay? Okay. One small exception to that is the line T by Alexander Wang, which is the lower end of this label. So I'm not saying don't pick it up, please do still, just don't pay up an extraordinary amount for T by Alexander Wang specifically. But otherwise, yeah, you could pay whatever you want. Next is Alexander Berman. This is a designer shoe brand named after the founder, founded in 2008. They are pretty freaking pricey, mostly in the $700 range. Comps are fairly consistently over $100, maxing out around $300, which is super impressive because just now when I went onto their website, they have 50% off their entire summer collection, which is usually not a great sign, but the resale value is holding strong for now. They're also specifically known for their Clarita sandal, which ties up in the front of the ankle, and those do more often than other styles do, reach over that $200 mark. Honestly, this is a top tier bolo brand. Um, just It's just that that phrase is starting to sound like it holds no meaning. Next is Alexandre Plokov. A Russian-American clothing designer brand, this brand retails for just as much or even more as all the other Alexanders we just went over, but the resale isn't there as much as far as I can tell. Now, that is not to say that you cannot get good money for these pieces. Okay, it is a designer brand and it started in 2011, so it's possible that there just isn't a ton of it out on the resale market yet. Um, they're known for their gothic military style, and honestly, if I saw one, I would grab it and I would list it high, just like all the other people in Posh seem to have done. We will just have to see if um, if more of those sell and what they sell for. Time will tell, but know the name for sure because this brand retails for arms and legs. But yeah, the there are some slightly lower comps than I would expect for such a high retail brand. Next is Alexia Maria. So another top tier bolo on our hands. This brand is known for its gowns, formal gowns, and they retail for a lot of money. From their website, uh, Alexia Maria is a luxury evening wear collection founded by Alexia Maria Esker in 2014. 
Inspired by the golden age of film and fashion, it romanticizes a classic era with the purpose of reigniting the art of dressing up. So they use a lot of bows and stuff. The retail's over a thousand mostly and resell is mostly almost north of 400. If the dress is white, you can market it as a wedding dress. There's a $20 comp for an Alexia Maria branded hanger. And I think as I've adequately emphasized, um, big bolo, if you could sell the hanger for $20, do not be selling any of the dresses for under 100. Just don't do it. I will come for you. I'm just kidding. I won't come for you. But I might. You never know. Okay, the next brand we're going to go over is Alexis. Just Alexis, no other word. Um, it is a high-end women's wear line. It's established in 2008 by actually a mother-daughter team, Anna and Alexis Barbara. Also one of my favorite brands to pick up and to resell. It's carried at all your usual suspects, Farfetch, Neiman Marcus, Revolve, you get it, high-end. This brand is getting a rather well-known among resellers, so its value is slowly declining. Sorry, not sorry for my contribution to that cycle. <laughs> and I'd like to use this time to note, please, if you work for Value Village or Goodwill, just click off this video. I want to get monetized, but I don't want to get monetized that badly. I am 90% kidding. Okay, back to Alexis. Okay, Alexis resells pretty well still, though I must say I've had a blue gorgeous, gorgeous maxi dress for over a year now, and it is Stunning, and it is, could someone buy this? Anyway, Alexis should get you in the $75 to $200 mark resale. Be careful, as this is one of many brands that we're gonna go over with a big old landmine to sidestep, and that landmine is in the shape of a Target. They have a collab with Target. Obviously, when designer brands collab with Target, that the retail of those pieces are much lower, and so is the resale. So if you see, Alexis and you get excited, but then you see a little Target logo, run the other way. Don't buy those. They're not good. Okay, next is Alessandra Rich, another astronomical high-end bolo brand. Oh, we should really cut it here after this one because we're about to hop back down to like some normal earth tier level bolos. It was founded in 2010. The brand has its headquarters in London and an office in Milan, Italy. The collections are made in Italy and presented during the Paris Fashion Week. It says a lot of stuff about how it likes women on the website. They make everything from bags, jewelry, clothing, often retailing over a thousand dollars. Here's what the label looks like. The resale is usually between, oh, honestly, it's ridiculous. It's like $50 to $1,500. So look up specific comps. My advice, once again, is, and basically in general, is do not sell this for less than what it is worth. So. Yes, accept reasonable offers, but like $75 for one of these pieces is not a reasonable offer. Just wait, hold, get your bag. Capitalism. Okay, yes, that is lovely. <laughs> Let's end it there because the next brand on this list maxes out at like 75 resale and we just went on a freaking ride and I do not want to degrade the bolos to come, mid-tier bolos, but still bolos. Just they, they won't get you as much money, but you will likely find them a lot more often. And in my opinion, high tier bolos are fun and all, but the real money is things that you can reliably find and come across. And there's some advice that no one asked for among their bolo lists. So I will see you all in the next video.